Welcome into week 15 of Band of Betters, a betting show for sports fans looking to be more data driven. It's a sunny day here where I am in Baltimore, Maryland. Brad Cronthal alongside Spencer Cronthal. We are of Alloy Sports. Excited to talk about the week that was and the week upcoming in the NFL. Spencer, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. We've got an awesome playoff push in our hands as we approach week 15. Another great week this wrapped up. Excited to get into it. Really good week for us. I know in the past week, really good week for a lot of our betting systems as well that we've been pushing out on AlloySports.com in the app. I uh, want to get started here with our opening act, your favorite moment from week 14 in the NFL season. I mean, I'm looking at San Francisco, Tampa Bay. No Jimmy G. Trey Lance already gone earlier this year. It's not even Zach Sudfeld who they, could, who they cut earlier in the season. It's Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy coming up with an awesome performance, leading the team to a blowout. I mean, two touchdowns, 93 QBR using ESPN statistic, and threw in a rushing touchdown to boot as well as they take down the GOAT, Tom Brady. Does it get much better than that for Brock Purdy? No, it doesn't. And he was extremely efficient, 16 to 21, 185 yards, two touchdowns. He just looks comfortable in that offense. And I think it's just the additions that Kyle Shanahan made to this team, whether it's a backup or a starter. Christian McCaffrey comes to mind and now Brock Purdy adding players to his roster that fit them really well. So when there are injuries and there is a transition, they're able to augment those with positivity and win those games because they have guys that are just confident in playing in the positions that they are and, and know how to fill that role. So I agree with you. What an incredible game that was. Brock Purdy's family in the stands getting emotional as well. Didn't expect a blowout of the Bucks, but it is the NFL, so expect the unexpected. My opening act favorite moment actually comes in Seattle. Carolina, sticking with the NFC South theme here, going to Seattle on the road. These guys are playing hard for Steve Wilkes. They come out of Seattle with a victory. They entered as four-point underdogs. Sam Darnold, I mean, it seems like he's quarterback number four or five on the depth chart the last couple of years for the Panthers. I know he started last year, but injured this year, comes out, and he's been playing well, and they've been playing hard. Again, not the most amazing numbers when it comes to the, the passing yards, he was 14 to 24, 100, 120 yards and a touchdown. But it was that efficiency and leading the offense and not turning the ball over. Carolina's playing well. They're playing really hard. Deontay Foreman, 74 rushing yards. Chuba Hubbard, 74 rushing yards and a touchdown. They got the run game going really well in Seattle. A surprising defeat there for a, a Seahawks team fighting for a playoff spot and a playoff bid. I was really impressed with them and the way they're playing. They seem like a confident bunch from a team that looked dead in the water when they fired Matt Rule just a few weeks back. Yeah, I mean, when I look at it, I see a Carolina team that put up over 220 yards on the ground and a Seattle team missing Kenneth Walker, only putting up 46 yards on the ground. Geno still aired it out with three touchdowns, did have the two interceptions, though. But when I see it, I see a team that almost outrushed the other by 200 yards. Most of the time, you're going to be in a pretty good spot, especially when you don't turn over the ball like Darnold did not yesterday or two days ago. Absolutely. So I want to take a look right now, and this is the NFC South odds on FanDuel. Tampa Bay is 6-6. and The Panthers are 5-8. and The Falcons are 5-8. and And then the Saints are 4-9. and Or sorry, Tampa Bay is 6-7 and now. So it is a one-game lead over the Panthers and the Falcons in the division. You see the odds, though, still heavily in Tampa Bay's favor at minus 320. Carolina, that second team now, on the come up at plus 360. Even Atlanta, they're still just one game back. They're changing quarterbacks and Desmond Ritter. But look at those odds at plus 1,600. And the Saints are, are well off right now, but still only a few games behind. Is there a play here where you don't take Tampa Bay and zero in on the Carolina Panthers or maybe even the Falcons in your mind? Yeah, when I look at it, I'm looking at the division standings. I'm looking at their in-division in record as well. And with Tampa and Carolina both sitting at 3-1 and one with a big matchup coming up in two weeks, I think that would be the play where if you think Carolina can sneak out a win, They've got they've got a chance to take the division with it with Atlanta being one and three right now in the division. That's going to be tough to overcome in addition to the being one game back. But I look at Tampa and Carolina. I'm not going to bet against Brady personally, 
But if there was a chance, Carolina has that matchup. They've got the same division record right now. They're only one game back. They've got a chance to potentially steal this thing if Darnold can play turnover-free football. Not expecting him to win the game, just don't lose the game. It's kind of amazing we're in this situation. (laughs) Tom Brady, I mean, they have not played good football in Tampa. The defense hasn't been as strong. Brady hasn't been very good. The offense hasn't seemed to click all year. The offensive line has had a ton of trouble, especially Donovan Smith, the left tackle, who's had a career of being a fantastic tackle. It's just not working right now in Tampa Bay under Todd Bowles. Is there a reason to vote or or bet on another team in that division? Right now, I don't see it. It's not like there's a young quarterback who's taking the league by storm. Sam Darnold, we kind of know what he is. They're going to need the rushing game to really crush it, to be able to have a chance here, which they definitely have a chance. And then in Atlanta, they're they're still figuring things out, seemingly at ground zero again, starting with Desmond Ritter this coming week. So I'm not ready to put my money on any other team. If this was like the last week of the year and it came down to one game, like you said, if it may be a week or two, maybe you take a flyer. But right now with a few games left, it's hard to hard to predict anything other than Tampa Bay at this point. But it's definitely exciting and a line to monitor. If you really like Carolina, this is a great time to get in. You still got that really high plus value when they're only one game behind. So definitely something we want to keep track of. All right. So we talked about last week how we were really successful with a few of our systems. I want to highlight two of them right now. So our first is our road grader strategy. That one has hit pretty much all year. That's the number one preloaded strategy when you download Alloy Sports. And that went 5-2 and two last week. And coincidentally, our most recent betting strategy that we put up in one of our Alloy forecasts, the physical skill player strategy, that went 4-1, and one, capped off with a New England win on Monday Night Football. A lot of success that we're seeing. And again, a lot of these plays and these strategies work for different ones so exciting week and if you're betting with the alloy systems that we're providing let alone the ones you're building yourself you're making money a hundred percent another great week this past week i know i i like to follow a little bit of the road grader strategy i didn't follow completely but i had baltimore and the jets also had tampa bay so while brock purdy was my moment of the week it was not necessarily the moment of the week for my bank account but i'll take the two in one week all right well let's go through your picks right now uh, from last week and, and walk us through it. Yeah, so had Baltimore at plus two and a half. Really liked, you know, not thinking the offense would change too much over the recent weeks. We've seen Greg Roman of the Ravens offense turn Lamar into a game manager. Tyler Huntley filled a similar role this past week before going down, then filled in with Anthony Brown again, playing that similar role, handing off the ball. And Pittsburgh, you know, one, once Pickett went down, Trubisky was moving the ball. But every time they seemed to get any momentum on offense, ended up with those three intercep- three costly interceptions. Happy to take that one. The Jets took advantage of a big line, got them at plus nine, covered at plus eight. And then the Bucks. I can't say I expected Brock Purdy to light him up. It's pretty awesome that he did. But I, I was riding with uh, you know Tampa Bay plus four, thinking Brady could bounce back. Yeah, Expecting I think to bounce back this week. The way you bet is also a really nice tip here. Is just you know, going across different books and getting the most value. So instead of getting plus two and a half for the Ravens at minus 110 or minus 115, you found at Bet Rivers, you could find it at minus 102. You get a few more cents in your wallet there off a $10 bet or a $20 bet. And, and as those bet sizes increase, that's dollars significant. That that comes back to you. And then points bet with the minus 107 odds. So kudos to you for finding the good VIG values there um, across the board. All right, I'm going to pull up um, my... Bet stamp picks this week um, from my bets. And I, again, a very successful week for me. Started off uh, pretty pretty down when Las Vegas, who's been hot, chokes away <laughs> uh, a very significant lead to then lose to the lowly Rams and Baker Mayfield. So started the week 0-1 on a Thursday night, but recovered quite nicely. And again, a lot of these carried over from the defensive pressure strategy, the physical skill player strategy, and... Um, the road grader strategy. So I got Baltimore a little bit of a worse line than you did. So I got them at plus two. Obviously they win that cashes Jacksonville. I think this of all the systems that have been built and pushed out from the alloy forecast Jaguars were probably the most light team um, of all the systems, just the cross referencing different strategies. And, and they showed up over 50% of the 15 that we pushed out. So Jacksonville was a bet, you know, Personally, I didn't know if I liked because Tennessee coming off a 
butt whooping the week before at home, but they got business done and, and Jacksonville really proved something. And it's like, what happened to this Jaguars team between week three and the last and week 13 or 14 when they beat Baltimore, they just collapsed, but they're actually a decent football team. Um, crazy. Then the Jets plus 10, nice cover with the late field goal. Miami, I, I did like Miami on the money line this week. That didn't happen. And then the New England Patriots obviously felt good about that one when the unfortunate injury of Kyler Murray went down in the first quarter. So end the week, four and two. We'll take it. Another profitable week for me, uh, over 500 on the season in the NFL. You got to love that. Um, I'll take that every day of the week. It's the hardest sport to bet. So that was our picks from this past week. Mentor, I want to go and transition now to our forecast picks for the upcoming week. Week 15, can't believe we're almost there at the end here. What are some plays that stand out to you, and is there a strategy that you're looking at in particular? Yeah, so I'm fully riding with the road grader strategy this week. There's been a little bit of overlap with the drive extenders that I've really liked this year as well, but I see – one, two, three, four, five games that I'm looking to bet. So hoping for a nice, nice big week, nice big payoff after just, you know, taking three games this past week. Underdogs, favorites, money line spread. I'm looking underdogs across the board with the road grader. Underdogs and, on the spread. Exactly. And a couple that I'm excited about, I'm expecting a couple bounce backs. I see Tennessee at, at LA, the Chargers. Herbert obviously looked great this past week. Tennessee's had a couple rough weeks. I'm, I'm expecting some bounce back. They've got to show up, you know, for Vrabel. I see Miami looking to cover plus seven and a half at Buffalo. I think in division, Miami's been playing Buffalo extremely tough recently. I think they're due for a bounce back as well. And then one game, which I'm really intrigued about, is Baltimore at Cleveland. You know, they Baltimore plus three, basically playing the line, just being, you know, basically a toss-up essentially factoring in that Baltimore's the road team. But I don't think the offense changes that much. Whether it's it, it's looking like it could be Anthony Brown, and I don't Huntley. think it, I don't think or, Huntley or coming Huntley. off the concussion. Exactly. So it depends on how it how won't Huntley be Lamar. We know week. it won't be Lamar. But regardless of who it is at quarterback, with the way the offense has been structured these past couple of weeks, I don't think it necessarily changes things. And I think Baltimore's got a pretty good chance to cover at Cleveland. All right, I like it. And for those following the road grader strategy, is back tested since 2019. It's got a 56% win percentage, 10% ROI for heavy underdogs, and a 9% ROI for close underdogs against the spread. Spence, I'm going to follow you for some of these picks. I'm going to go back to our most recently unveiled physical skill player strategy. And this one is hit at 69% this season. So I like that with a 30-game sample size. It's NFL. You're not going to have massive sample sizes in the span of one year. So the first game I like is Pittsburgh plus 2.5 at Carolina. Um, we'll see if Pickett plays. I think that's a big deal if he does. Um, I think Pittsburgh is going to wake up and play a lot better in that game. Second is the Jets are at home against Detroit. Don't love it. It's pretty much a toss-up. I'm going to hold off on that one for now. Miami plus seven and a half at Buffalo. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my my bet on this one. I'm gonna go with the Dolphins over a touchdown underdog here, and and we'll play that one out. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna also go with the uh, road grader system here. I, I like Baltimore plus three. I think getting Dobbins, like you said, and Edwards healthy and getting that run game established is key. This is a spot where I think Cleveland can win this game for sure. No matter what, I think it's gonna be close. I think Cleveland can win this game. How motivated are they? They didn't seem very motivated, and I think the key here is Baltimore's defense. Really forcing a lot of turnovers lately. Deshaun Watson, (laughs) I mean, he just makes that contract look stupid. He's a good quarterback. He's rusty, obviously. I mean, he's coming in in week 14 of the NFL and getting his week 13, 14, getting his first start of the year. He's obviously going to be rusty, but the contract he got did not warrant (laughs) that for sure. I'm going to take Baltimore, forcing some turnovers against Watson. And then if there's one more, Tennessee, I mean, you, there's got to be some aggression here. They're in L.A. They're plus three. A little bit surprised that they're only three-point underdogs. But Chargers, I just don't trust them either. Tennessee plus three. 
give it to me. There's probably a few more that pop up here. Like the Giants have been hard to bet recently. They're four and a half at Washington. Somehow Washington's been able to play so well lately. That might be one I look at betting later in the week. And then there's Atlanta at New Orleans, Atlanta new quarterback. So there's a few that I'm not quite sure yet whether I'm going to place a bet, but the, the three that I mentioned earlier are definitely games that I want to get in on um, before it's too late. Yeah, definitely looking forward to a lot of opportunity. I think there's a lot of games that we think can be close, teams bouncing back. Excited to see how it plays out this upcoming week. Absolutely. So without further ado, I mean, really exciting week 14 in the books, an exciting week 15 ahead. One thing I won't do this week, I'm not betting against Philly, that's for sure. Every time I bet against them, uh, they not only cover, but they win by like 30 points. So I'm not touching Philly, Chicago this week. I can promise you that. Well, thank you for tuning in. It's going to be an exciting week of football ahead of us. Any questions about the platform, feel free to reach out to us directly at B. Cronthal, at S. Cronthal on Twitter. And we're excited, you know, to win more bets this week and continue the profitability chain. See you next week on Band of Betters. <laughs>